This is Twit. Uh, we have Carl Martin joining us, KG4 HBN, and he is special. This is the section emergency coordinator from the northern Florida panhandle. He's been working his hiney off. Um, not only him, but a lot of other ham radio operators as well. They've been supporting Hurricane Michael. And um, Carl, why don't you tell us kind of what you guys have been doing for the last two weeks? Oh, we've been pretty busy. Um, we've been having a lot of people deployed out there helping out uh, during the disaster. It's uh, We were hit pretty hard. Um, they're talking about uh, this being, Michael being very close to Andrew when it hit back in the uh, early 90s. Okay, so in some of these places like Panama Beach and such, um, there was no comms. Uh, am I correct? Zero percent cell coverage, no DTR for um, any public safety. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, I don't have him, uh, but some of the people that were down there deployed were talking about seeing cell phone towers completely tipped over. Um the shelters had no communications. Some, even some of the EOCs had uh, no communications to the state. Okay, and let's talk about the EOCs there. Um, the state EOC was activated, obviously, before the hurricane ever reached um, land. And I'm going to guess the other EOCs, county EOCs, did the same thing. But you guys needed comms with them. Um, how'd that work? Did did SARNET work for you guys, or did you end up having to use HF? What 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 happened there? From the beginning, the HF was the primary means of communication. SARNET, um, it was there in case we needed it. Uh, the repeater that was located close to the disaster area, I think it's just outside Bay County, uh, had some issues. Uh, the re- generator that was it was powering it was brand new, and they had mechanical issues just afterwards. So it took a couple of days till I got that back online, but after that, uh, SARNET was very active. Okay. And again, speaking about the EOCs, what kind of traffic were the operators handling? Were they just requests for supplies or injuries or what what was going on? Most of it was uh, requests for supplies. Um, There really wasn't much injury traffic. It was uh, this, the shelters had no communications to the EOCs. The EOCs themselves, uh, after a few days, had communication with state, but they had no communication with shelters. The shelters managers, uh, staff there were sending messages through amateur radio to the HF net, and then the HF net was sent it up to state or the county, depending on where it needed to go. Okay, and speaking of the HF net, who was running that? Uh, was that being hosted at the state EOC, or was that just part of the hurricane watch net and um, people outside of the area were taking that traffic? It was uh, actually the net manager was uh, not able to run the net. Him and his wife had to leave the area. They lived in the disaster area. But um, the the Duval County EOC was pretty active in SARNET and on HF. And they were the ones helping out past traffic. The net manager that took over uh, was very active as well. So the net manager between the SARNET and the HF net were talking to each other on a daily basis. Wow, and um, how many how many shelters were you supporting? <laughs> that changed by the by the day by the hour. Um, originally, it was only going to be I think it was between eight or ten. Uh, that list by day three had grown to about thirty. Wow, and the other thing, all of us outside of the area, we saw on the internet where. You guys were calling for help outside um, all over the United States saying, please come help us as long as you have a background check and you can be self-sustaining. Did you did people answer the call? Did you get enough support and some good operators to help you out? Yes, we did. I'm very happy to have them come in and help us. We had people from Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, North and South Carolina and Georgia come in uh, from those areas. A lot of the operators actually came from West Central uh, Florida section and the South Florida sections of, uh, you know, we're North Florida. So there's three sections in our state. Very good. Um, And you had mentioned you've seen Hurricane Andrew. So this is not your first rodeo, I'm going to guess, with amateur radio. Did you help out during Andrew as well? 
No, actually, I didn't get uh, licensed until 2001, but I've been active uh, since then. And especially in the hurricanes in the last few years, I was emergency coordinator for the Volusia County, our local area, uh, through all three of this last uh, three years. And then I only took over as section emergency coordinator just two months ago. So it was quite a start. Wow. Welcome to your position. Uh, that is uh, quite the start. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you is, what do you think was the most amazing thing you guys did in the last two weeks? I think uh, I spoke to one of the amateurs uh, that was deployed there. He was there practically from the beginning. Um, he was doing some work, some camera. He's a videographer, and he was doing work there. And he put down his camera to actually help during this emergency. So he was not making money during this whole event. Um, but he was able to actually get a message out from one of the fire stations. One of the uh, paramedic, fire paramedics, I guess they're called, um, they had a health issue, and they needed to be moved from the fire station th with a helicopter to a to a hospital. They were actually, it's a life-threatening th life uh, problem they were having there. And he let the chief use the HF radio to contact state and get the helicopter in there to get them moved out. Wow, and I think you're referencing James Lee, is that correct? That's it, WX4TV. Yeah, I was, uh, I were friends on Facebook and he was posting some amazing things about um, uh, just the destruction and devastation really and um, shelters with no power and um, they were holding flashlights to make pancakes. I just, uh, I can't imagine. I mean, where are you guys at now? How is it going? Do, you just stood down on Monday, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, it's doing very well. Uh, what I've been getting from all the after action reports from the people, uh, they don't leave until they have uh, solid communications of uh, internet because uh, most of the shelters have IP phones. Uh, they have FEMA in the area usually before we leave, and they definitely have a strong cellular connection for six to 12 hours before we decide to actually leave the area. Very good. And um, you sent us some pictures. So Victor, why don't we just go ahead and breeze through those? And, um, you know, uh, Don also survived a hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. Don, um, he, uh, sometimes he likes to comment, sometimes not. Don, do you have any words about, uh, as we go through these pictures, about your feelings on it? I, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, I did my best to avoid a lot of the news coverage because, quite frankly, it gave me a flashback. Uh, PTSD around surrounding these things. Uh, is is real and uh, you know we've got a really really good friend of the show charlie wooten in f4a who's chief engineer for the panama city uh, iheart media and iheart radio radio stations the same company that i work for and uh, you know they lost a tower over there so um, everybody has been just so so busy and uh, for those of us over here in the new orleans area who who remember katrina and uh, also we remember andrew in fact uh, we had a young ham of the year from uh, 1994 who uh, won young ham of the year because of something that he did when Andrew came through and, and hit the uh, the Louisiana area. So, um, yeah, our hearts go out to all of those guys in North Florida and uh, just, uh, man, just our prayers continue to go out. Absolutely. Um, the other question I had was, um, Carl, how many operators did it actually take to run this whole operation? I'm actually still going through all the reports. I haven't got an exact number, but at this point, it's running around 40 uh, operators that the counts shelters deployment, uh, EOC deployment, uh, and operators just acting as net controls or being on frequency to deliver and pass traffic. Wow, that's amazing. That's a that's a lot of response. And um, my other question was, it took a while. You guys were there before Red Cross actually showed up to some of these shelters. So you were kind of the first responders. Um, that had to have been a little crazy, huh? Yes. Uh, we first, we sent people in groups. Um, they would get there, stay there three to five days, and then we'd rotate them out because we can't have people in there for a week or two weeks at a time. So we got in there pretty quickly as possible. And uh, with all the help that uh, all the other areas gave us, we were able to do this. 
okay, and some of these pictures, it looks like I'm seeing some uh, portable maybe showers and I see some sinks there. Was that brought in by FEMA? Yes, they had okay. uh, portable showers, portable uh, laundry mats. Um, it's, it was kind of surprising how, how what they could bring in as a portable uh, trailer. Right. And, um, of course, we had Waffle House out there, too, bringing in their trailers. That was pretty nice. Um, that would have been one of the better ones to see, I think, uh, for sure. Well, um, Carl, I really appreciate all this. Is there anything else you wanted to tell us about your experience in the last two weeks? Anything you, you want our viewers to know? It's just uh, I'm just so happy that people were able to come out and help us out. Uh, we were in need. Uh, the hit, We didn't expect it to hit so hard uh it, three days before it was category one uh just a day before it was category three it was just so quickly it, it evolved and got speeded it sped up um and it just so many ham turned out to help us out and really appreciate it this is why we train this is why we exercise and all of you out there um when you're going to respond to some of these situations i think that carl can 100 percent agree with me make sure you have your nims certifications done um and yes. um uh, make sure you have all of that, those certs ready to show if you're going to deploy to one of these places and never self-deploy so all right carl thank you yes, so much never. for being on the show tonight and uh, we really appreciate all the information and you guys really worked hard and thank you for all of your service and all of you and all of your operators did a terrific job so thank you so much thank you for having me